Whew. My jeans are riding up, riding up something fierce. Nice stain on my knee. Jesus, look like six bucks. <laughs> One. YouTubers, Billy the Moto Kid here. It is a beautiful Friday afternoon here in Minnesota. Partly cloudy, about 60 degrees out. So I couldn't resist. I'm gonna hop on the bike, put out some content for you guys. Uh, so I had a few ideas about what I wanted to talk about today, but in to keep a, a topic going from my Instagram. Uh, for those of you who don't follow me on Instagram, it's what you might expect, Billy the Moto Kid. But earlier this week, I celebrated 900 days of sobriety. Just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber, you go and do something like this. And totally redeem yourself! <laughs> it wasn't easy for me. It's been uh, quite the roller coaster. I know uh, if you haven't caught previous episodes, I've talked a little bit about my my experience on the transplant list, and you know some of some of the the highs and lows of that. But it is purely 100% because I got sober enough, long enough, to finally break down and buy my first motorcycle, and so I am riding it today. It is a 2007 Honda Shadow Spirit, 750 cc's. And it is everything I hoped it could be, and more. Um, to me, it was the perfect starter bike. I have a little bit of experience driving dirt bikes, crap like that, when I was a kid. Um, hopped on a crotch rocket, maybe drunk a time or two. Um, so obviously, as you can imagine, I didn't learn a whole lot, but this is my very first motorcycle, and I will keep this for as long as I can until I trade it in for something better. But because I got sober long enough, uh, I created that bucket list for myself and I've done a few things. I worked at Walmart, uh, I bought myself this motorcycle, I sported a Mohawk for a whole year. I changed my own oil, or, or a few. Um, I switched careers entirely to start helping out those, uh, those adults with special needs who I care about so much. And so all this really only could have happened if I was sober. Now, whoop, thought I was gonna be able to not not have to put a foot down. Sorry. And all this really happened because I was sober. Now, granted, if I was shit faced, I would have absolutely thought of the idea. Oh, it would have been grand. Two o'clock in the morning, be like, tomorrow, get up. And I'm going to buy myself a motorcycle! Um, as so many of us have done in our lives, had the, the greatest of ideas well hammered. Uh, they usually start with, here, hold my beer. But, uh, really, because I got sober enough long enough, I actually committed to buying this motorcycle. And it didn't take, it, it took me a pretty long time. Because one of the things that I haven't mentioned about the things on my list, uh, is I'd like them to more or less be free or pay for themselves. Um, and a lot of that comes from when I decided to switch careers, I went from making a pretty good living for myself to what you can imagine a non-profit pace so I, and but granted my lifestyle has changed a whole lot I did some math earlier this week just to see how much quitting drinking has saved me in the last 900 days and it has saved me roughly twenty two thousand five hundred dollars in that two and a half years we'll call it 
pretty amazing when you when you actually put some math behind it. So I went out, did some research, I talked to buddies who had some bikes, and next thing you know, I go, I just, I literally just, out of whim, swung into the DMV, and I'm like, ah, I bet I can at least pass the permit test without studying, and I, I did, barely, I think. So I had my permit, I toyed around, but I, I had my permit, but no, no, no bike. Uh, so when I was fiscally able to purchase one, I went out and I bought this motorcycle. Um, I took the class, as I, it's just my opinion, I think everyone should, just because mostly I learned what bad habits I had. Um, and it's all been, uh, you know, butterflies and rainbows and unicorns ever since then. I uh, now have, you know, a variety of bikes, and it, I don't just enjoy riding. There's something extremely therapeutic about hunkering down in your garage, just, just me, my friends the Rolling Stones, and a few wrenches, and the only hammering we're doing is trying to get a lug nut off. So... Yeah, mostly I just I just wanted to thank you guys, you know, for, for any support. I didn't think for a long time. I thought I might have put myself into a catch-22 where I'd gotten sober long enough to actually follow through on something in my life. But... I started to ask myself... A, a seemingly, at the time, legit question. And that question was, is there room in the biker community for a sober guy? And the answer is overwhelmingly, well, well I almost, almost have at it. The answer is overwhelmingly, hell yeah. Um, and now my departure from Rochester, back to the Twin Cities, someone introduced the idea of, of, of a sober MC. So I reached out to them. I'm hoping they get back to me. If you guys, again, if you guys know anything about them, best ways to reach out, all that good stuff, please let me know. Just leave it in the comments. And hopefully, one of these days, I can patch in. And their logos. The club I'm looking at, their, their, their patch is pretty sweet. Not that that's the reason you should join their club. But, you know, again, all I really know about clubs is that, you know, any cliche nonsense I've seen on Sons of Anarchy. Which, you know, let's be real, is at least 95% bullshit. I mean, there are real aspects. I'm sure they, you know, the storyline comes from somewhere. But so, if you guys can help me out, with that that would be great. Help me continue on my sober journey, find a new sober brotherhood. That would be awesome. And secondly, I wanted to, you know, to thank you know all you subscribers out there for watching and, and continuing to support me. I have, I imagined I would lose a few when I when I made the announcement on Instagram. You know, just name your cliche. Oh, he has a drink. Was he a pussy? Ah. No. <laughs> the fact is, I, I may have been a little too good at it. I went pro early, burned out, and now I'm retired. So, just as you guys, you know, can help me out by, you know, give me some ideas about clubs in the Minnesota area that might be sober friendly or, you know, have a sober mantra. Uh, I'd love, you know, to help out anyone who's who's struggling with their own their own recovery. Uh, every battle is, is different. You know, mine was a lot health based, but for some people, you know, it is not it is not an easy journey. And so, if you want to talk talk shop, talk bikes, talk sober and bikes. Leave a message in the comments. Hit me up on Instagram. 
uh, I'd be love to share about you know some of my story and some of my journey and maybe that will help you one of I'm gonna end with one of my favorite quotes and it goes as follows I never said it was gonna be easy I only said it's gonna be worth it so that that really applies to me in two ways um, one with my sobriety it certainly has not been easy uh, but it has been more than worth it and two you know just with the idea of this motorcycle it wasn't easy for me to go out and buy a motorcycle um, a lot of people were very anti motorcycle and based on my health at the time they're like this guy's just gonna he's just you know searching for searching for an easier way out <laughs> uh, not true but it wasn't easy for me but damn it's been worth it tax man I lost my job and I got hooked on oxycodone took the lights off I got the car in I bought a side off shotgun yeah